Uh, hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and iPhone has been out for almost 13 years at this point, or at least 12 years, and there have been a lot of design changes over the years, sometimes dramatically, sometimes not so much, depending on the year, but I thought we'd talk about what the design changes were, how they've changed over the years, and then also which one is your favorite and which one's my favorite. So we'll start with the original iPhone since these aren't in the past decade, but the original iPhone had a nice aluminum feel to it with plastic on the bottom for the antennas. This was a phone that I used for quite some time. I really liked it, but then we switched to the plastic design with the 3G and the 3GS. Now, some people I know really like this design, but I thought it felt much cheaper than the original iPhone, despite its better features. It did get better reception due to the plastic, but these were previous generation phones or previous decade phones when we're talking about 2010 to 2020. And so with 2010 came the iPhone 4. It was leaked quite a bit before it was released, but the iPhone 4 is my personal favorite design of all time. Now, this varies, of course, based on when you started using iPhone or some other people like the next version of phone more, but the four and four S were introduced in 2010 and 2011 and really upped the game as far as overall feel design and construction of a phone. At this point, we have stainless steel around the outside band. We have glass front and back, and we have a 3.5 inch display. It's still pretty small compared to today's phones, but it held up well and it felt very, very durable. We had the 30 pin adapter here in the bottom. And overall, this was one of my favorite phones to use. It just feels very solid despite the many antenna issues it had when it first came out. Now, many people's favorite design is the iPhone 5 and 5S, and this continues to be the favorite of most people to this day when I run a poll on Twitter or places like that where people say which phone design is their favorite. It brought an aluminum design with glass in the back on the top and bottom for the antennas, and then aluminum all the way around. It's just one solid piece and then a four inch display that got a little bit bigger. And this brought lightning as well. So this was the switch from the 30 pin adapter of the iPods over to lightning, which allowed for thinner phones, but also allowed for different designs and other things inside the phone. And so this was the favorite of many. It was introduced in 2012 and for 2013, they didn't do a whole lot other than up the processor speed and introduce touch ID. So that's why I included this one. And along with 2012 or 2013, rather five S and five C were introduced. And a lot of people have fond memories of five C. This is sort of a budget phone at the time. It's not really cheap or it wasn't cheap, but it was the less expensive iPhone, sort of like the iPhone 10 R is today. It came in a bunch of colors and just has an all plastic outside frame. And then inside there's a little bit of aluminum for reinforcement. But again, they had the same thing as the iPhone 5S minus touch ID. So it's a really nice phone. A lot of people really liked it. Then we moved on to something a little bit more radical in 2014, a larger phone. They also introduced a larger size, similar to this one. I'll talk about that in a moment, but this was an aluminum design curved edges, much like we see today. And this also had touch ID, but a much larger display. So we have all the same things that were introduced before, but a larger display. And this is when we had issues with the phone bending. So a lot of people were making videos about bending these. I never had an issue. This is the original one I had never bent or anything like that. Now they also introduced a larger phone at the same time, the six plus, and this is a six S plus, which just brought us a bigger display. So we started with the 5.5 inch displays all the way to 6.5. It was really nice to have much larger displays on phones. So it gave us a bigger display and a bigger battery as well. Now I did not have a seven handy. It was actually in use, but the seven, all the seven did was take away the headphone jack. So I didn't really want to include that. That's not a fond memory for me. I still miss the headphone phone button jack. And then they also made it so the home button doesn't press anymore. So in between the time of the seven, they introduced the iPhone SE brought back this design with some better specs has the six S specs in it. And it's just a better phone overall compared to the five S, but then they perfected the original design from the six with the eight and the eight gave us aluminum again, but glass front and back and the back glass allows us to wirelessly charge it. So again, we don't have that home button. We don't have the headphone jack and we also have a home button that doesn't move. So we got some water protection and everything else. So many people consider the iPhone eight and eight plus to be the best overall design since the six that kind of perfected everything and really made it just a perfection of the home button designed phone. 
Also in the same year as the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, which was 2017, we saw the new design, the iPhone 10. So we skipped the iPhone 9. Some people think that will come this year, but they skipped the iPhone 9 and brought out the 10 with its new overall design and brought back the stainless steel construction. So I know a lot of people really love this phone and consider it the best one. They brought in two cameras, but placed them vertically instead of horizontally and glass front and back with that design around the edge. And this just feels like a very premium device. It also introduced the notch and face ID. So we've got a much bigger edge to edge display and a lot of people really liked that. Then the following year, or last year, well, two years ago now, 2018, we received a, a minor update to the iPhone 10 with the 10s Max, a little bit larger size, but also a 10s that's basically the same with a little bit faster processor, and also the 10R. This was the best seller and still is to this day. And a lot of people like this, but it brought back aluminum on the outside edge. And instead of having an OLED display, it has an LCD display. So it's basically the same. It's in between the size of the 10 and 10s Max or the 10s. And it's really the perfect phone for most people, apparently based on its price and what it's selling like. And then this year or last year now, Apple introduced the iPhone 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. And really all that did was bring in much larger batteries, bring in a matte back, change where the Apple logo is placed and bring a triple camera setup. So we have all of those things with a speedier processor and a little bit nicer display that's a little bit brighter and more vibrant. So that's all for these. There's a lot of small changes over the years, little incremental changes. Some people like a lot of the design. Some people don't like them at all. Some people don't like the notch. The notch has really never bothered me, but some people really don't like it. But either way, there is an iPhone for you over the years, and I would love to hear which one was your favorite and why. Like I said, I like the 4, the 4S, and the 5. These are probably my favorite of all time, and I would love to see either one of these revived in the iPhone 12. But let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below. I'll also link a wallpaper for you in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.